Hello again and welcome. Jeff Ray and we're Steeped in Light Photography. And this week we're on location steeped in light in beautiful Acumal in the state of Quintana Roo in Mexico. Conveniently located right now between the pool and the beach and I'm here to tell you we're going to be bringing you some exciting new product announcements this week. We've got a couple of pre-production models of some lenses that we're going to go through. We've got some new equipment and we're going to be doing some model shoots. But coming up next, we've got a video that I think you're going to enjoy, and I'll see you right after the break. And I want to welcome everyone to Akamal. We're trying to do a little bit of work here. I've got my lovely assistant holding a giant reflector, my four foot, actually it's my 48 inch, my 47 inch reflector off here. To my left, that'll be a camera right. And uh, we're right out here by the pool area. Um, it's gorgeous this afternoon, and we're really looking forward to some great uh, shots a little bit later on to share with you guys. But for right now, I want to go over with you a little bit of what I promised a few days ago, which is how to get your Westcott eye lighter into your checked luggage, safely transporting it to your destination and then allowing you to set it up for use. Everyone out there that's had a chance to try the Westcott eye lighter has loved it. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't make any money on this video. Uh, but everyone who has the, uh, the Westcott Eyelighter has really enjoyed using it, and it's a terrific piece of hardware. It does a great job as a reflector, and it's just the right size for capturing one or two models and getting that beautiful uh, uh, iris reflection that you really want to get and that beautiful pupillary response, which is classic and, and uh, uh, kind of a signature of that, that piece of uh, reflector. The downside to it is it's just large enough that it won't fit into any standard chuck luggage. And I discovered that quite by frustrating accident in attempting to meet the new uh, international and uh, domestic requirements for uh, transporting materials like something like a reflector. And in mulling it over, I thought, you know, there's got to be a solution for that. And in fact, there is one. And I found it through a bit of trial and error that with the simple use of a uh, pipe cutter and a little bit of ingenuity with some wood dowels, you can make a really nice transportable version of that kit takes about 30 minutes to make the modifications. It is not something that in any way uh, affects its use or its uh, productivity while you're out in the field with it. And it does a terrific job. So in just a minute, I'm gonna reset the camera to show you guys a little bit of what I did on that. And in less than two or three minutes, I'm gonna show you basically how to make your eyeliner transportable through checked luggage. So we'll be right back, hang tight. All right, guys, I wanna do a share with you here a little bit of the um, pre-assembly condition of the Westcott Eyeliner when you have already made your modifications to allow it to be transported easily in either your checked luggage for both domestic and international flights. This is now gonna to conform to all of the standards, which is the best part of this modification. It also will allow, because of the way I engineered the cuts, allow you to use it in smaller uh, aircraft where you're gonna be attempting to bring this on board with you if you don't wanna put it in checked luggage there. And you can carry it in something like a oversized think tank bag or one of the other uh, convenient bags from Lowe's or some of the other uh, manufacturers that will allow you to bring this even on board smaller aircraft. The challenge is really twofold. Number one, being able to get the large crossbar that you can see uh, just in front of the rolled up reflector material. That you don't want to cut because it is very difficult to make a modification that will allow it to be reassembled accurately and with the strength required to hold the whole entire thing together properly. So you do have to be sure that whatever luggage you bring on board can accommodate that. That's about 30 inches in length, so it will typically fit into standard luggage. What does not is the tubing in front. And that tubing in front is the, where the modification magic occurs here. So I'm gonna show you right now what I've done, and I'm gonna pick up one of the nearest pieces here, which I'm gonna show some of the features on. In fact, we'll start with this piece right here. And I'm gonna hold this a little closer to the camera. Hopefully it'll allow me to do this. And you'll see my hands there. This is actually a section of the tubing that has been modified. You can see the tubing here, 12 and a half inches in length, and a small piece of wooden dowel that's been inserted, painted and inserted into the end. You'll also notice that I have a number on there. You'll see the number two right here. And that number indicates the uh, mating piece that will accommodate this particular section. These pieces of aluminum were cut using an inexpensive pipe cutter uh, available uh, at all of the big box stores. Uh, so if you have one of those locations that are uh, 
available in pretty much every major city or even in many of the smaller ones, you can actually pick up that pipe cutter for a few dollars and it will allow you to cut the aluminum tubing just like you would uh, copper or steel. It's very easy to cut this. Typically about 10 to 12 rotations with a typical pipe cutter will cut the tubing very easily. I marked it so that these longer pieces, which you will see here as well, and I'll bring that over to show a little detail on that. You can see where I've got the wing nut on this. Hopefully that'll allow me to focus a little more clearly on that wing nut. Let's see if I can do that for you guys. I'd like to see that a little more clearly. Okay, you can kind of see that right there. There we go. Um, this was actually added by drilling a hole with a standard drill, a quarter inch hole there. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you the assembly of this. But basically, this was cut in such a way that those longer lengths will now fit into the luggage, either in a, along the side of the luggage where it's out of the way, or at a diagonal if you have uh, some smaller pieces of luggage as well. And that was the critical thing about this. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and do a quick assembly and then show you what that assembled piece looks like. Okay. You can see now that I have already done a press fit assembly of the smaller tubing and you can see that it's now at its full extension that you would normally see when you are first assembling your kit out of the bag. And you can see that it's quite a bit longer, obviously, when fully assembled. The thing you need to remember, and basically your parts list will be very simple, and I'm going to include this in the comments down below, but essentially you need the 5 8 inch wood doweling which you can buy in three or four foot lengths for about three or four dollars. And then you're going to need three quarter inch dowel, and I'll show you a close up of both of those so you can see how they insert in the tubing. So this is your five eighths inch there, and then your three quarter inch here as well. Now you'll note that the way I've constructed this, the five eighths inch piece does not have any holes drilled in it. It's strictly a solid piece, kind of a poor paint job. I apologize for that but it is essentially inserted in as far as it can go. This is approximately three and a half to four inches in length. Four inches is the maximum that we found that worked well. Three and a half inch will work ideally. You'll have to hunt around. When you do find the five eighths inch pieces at the store, there's just enough variation in the mill work done on these that you'll want to find one that's a secure fit. So I do recommend you bring the piece of tubing with you that you're planning on inserting it into for the eyeliner so that you can get a good secure solid fit. But with a good friction fit, you do not need to drill any holes in this, and it will align quite nicely, as you can see right here on this piece that I've put together. In doing that assembly, you'll note that I have both a number, in this case number one, so I know to mate one with one, and you'll see an orientation mark here. Those two allow me to get the proper curvature in the proper place and leave it with a nice smooth curve that we love to see in that eyeliner. The numbers, of course, allow you to make sure that even if you've varied your position of your exact cut on the pipe, you're still going to wind up with exactly the proper length when you mate the pieces that are matched by number. So when you put your mark onto that pipe, and you can see that silver mark, I just used a silver Sharpie at approximately 12 inches, I marked that and then put the numbers on either side and ran some tape around it, some clear scotch tape, so that the numbers don't rub off in transit or in use. And basically that allows you to orient it properly and to know which pieces mate together. Now, the other thing you need to note about assembly on this is the hole that's drilled through the three-quarter inch piece. Why do we drill through the three-quarter and not through the five-eighths? By trial and error, what I discovered was that the five-eighths inch tubing itself has enough rigidity that the uh, pieces as just simply put together will hold beautifully and they don't flex, they don't distort, and they don't rotate. The three-quarter inch, not so much. Uh, even with the largest doweling I could find that was just under the three-quarter inch diameter of the inside diameter of that pipe, I still had a little bit of play in it, and in fact, you'll even see just a little bit perhaps here on the video, but it has just a bit. So the way that we eliminate that is to drill two holes into the dowel. I'll disassemble this so you can see very quickly what we're talking about here. Hopefully the video will allow me to show you this. That yeah, looks like it's going to be quite good. And you'll see the doweling as I pull it back out here. It's simply a single piece of doweling. I have a silver mark once again, so I know that I've inserted it the proper distance into the uh, eyeliner pipe. And you notice the two drilled holes. Basically, we reinsert that into the pipe, like so, lining up inside and outside hammer holes. Easiest way to do this, if you happen to have access to a small press, you can use a drill press. If not, you can use a handheld drill to do this. But you want to be sure, once you've drilled the first hole through your pipe, that you insert the wood and run a set of basically uh, small, these are number 10 in the English system. Metric would be about a 3.5 M screw, and that screw is one and one quarter inches in length. 
And then you have a matching, of course, matching wing nut here as well. You can put that through there so that when you insert the remainder of the pipe, and I'm going to be looking here for number one, which will be right here, I suspect. Excuse me, number four, rather. Number four, I apologize. There we go. There's the matching pipe for that number four. And you'll note that, again, I have the numbers here. There's the number four. And you can see the orientation on that. And you'll notice I already leave the wing nuts stored along with the uh, screws on the pipe so that's ready to go as quickly as possible when we get to our uh, location we'll be shooting. So essentially all I'm going to do is, pretty self-explanatory here, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the remaining pipe. Screw and nut there, remove that. And after you've drilled your hole, it's a simple matter to insert them. This is pretty self-explanatory here, so I apologize for oversimplifying this. But that should illustrate pretty clearly what we'll do. We'll align those holes so you can actually see all the way through the center there. And then I'm going to simply run that through as well. Too much coffee this morning. There we go, like that. And you can see that extending all the way through. When you put the first one in and then drill your second hole, you'll be certain that that inside doweling doesn't move, and that's how you get a perfect alignment. And when you're done, you'll notice that you once again have your pieces fully assembled. Once you've done that, you've really accomplished what you need because you now have both of these pieces in both the 5 8 inch diameter, inside diameter, and the 3 quarter inch back to their normal lengths. The whole process to make this kit takes about 30 minutes. You basically need to have the proper number of screws, which in this case is going to be four because you're only going to be using the screws and wing nuts on the 3 quarter inch pipe. And then on the 5 8 inch, you just need to have the doweling cut to the proper lengths. And the nice thing about the 5 8 inch is it goes together pretty easily. I always make the cuts, I'll make this point also, I make the cuts away from the pre-drilled side. You'll notice there's a side that's already been drilled out for you that has the spring mount to put these together. You don't want to try and drill on that end, and I don't recommend you cut near that end. I recommend you cut near the opposite end so that you're unimpeded in its use. And then all you're going to do is assemble it, like so, by simply friction fitting it together. And depending on how much paint you put on it, you can use a little bit of force as necessary. And I set my numbers up so that they give me pretty close to my alignment marks as well. And then you can see the alignment marks there. Now line up both on this side and the adjoining side. And of course the tape, you can even see the tape in the video here that's covering those marks. And now you see three out of the four pieces assembled. Just for sake of completeness, I'll go ahead and complete the assembly here. And you can see once again, line up those holes to make sure they line up appropriately. You can now see through the center there, right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish that assembly very quickly. Just take a moment here to finish that. And just to show you how well this works, what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the tape here and do a complete assembly of the kit now that everything's put back together and you can see all the lengths of tubing there. Move the camera just a bit away from its position so you can see the whole thing. And what I'll do is go ahead and assemble it and show you the final product and show you that it's working as it should. So I think you'll be pleased to see that as well, and I'll be back in just a moment with that. So as you can see, we've got it almost fully assembled at this point. One thing I may also, I'll also point out to you, the beautiful part of this is that when Westcott finished the engineering on it on this second version, this is actually version two of the eyeliner kit, they made the elastic along here that's used to uh, actually uh, secure the, the reflective material to the tubing much better in terms of its elastic qualities. And because it's more elastic and stretchable, it goes over those little a small number 10 screws and wing nuts very easily and assembles just as it would normally. So what I'm going to do now is finish this by uh, getting the last section of it done here and you'll notice I've brought out the uh, rods here that are used to secure the material at the end and I'm going to work this very quickly just to show you that this is actually happening in real time and how easily it all goes together and you'll notice that it maintains its shape very well, continues to uh, perform exactly as you would anticipate. And I'm going to uh, step around the camera here for just a moment, around the back side. And then finish the assembly here as well. And you'll be able to see how quickly all this goes together. 
the uh, elapsed time there, as I was putting all this together, was less than two minutes. So this is not a very long or complex process, as it is normally not a long or complex process either. Do make sure when you insert these rods, regardless of whether you make this modification or not, you want to be sure the rods are all the way through the material. Some people uh, fail to do that when they're assembling the Westcott unit. And if you don't, over time, these rods will bend. And that will actually destroy the, uh, the product. You don't want to do that. These are kind of pricey. So there we go. That is the full assembly. And you can see it now as it's done and finished. The only thing we're lacking now, of course, is the lock screw here to go in the very bottom of it in order to uh, secure it to your light stand. And you'll see that that goes on there. If I don't drop it, then, of course, you'll see that it goes right on here like so holding that properly. But now you'll be able to see that the complete kit does the job and uh, maintains its integrity and its shape as it normally would. And I think does a lovely job for you. So this makes it a lot easier to transport, makes it a lot easier to, to carry on to locations if you have assistants working with you. And you don't need to use the original travel bag. Uh, very nicely with uh, the use of either zip ties or rubber bands will quite easily go into your luggage. And because of its lightweight, of course, it doesn't even really impact very much the uh, weight limitations on a luggage. So there you are, the complete kit. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for my next video. And remember, it's not what you take, it's what you make. Make it matter and make it yours. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye-bye.